let's review. Uh, number one, we are using our law of exponents, okay? So all those first questions are from section 6, 1 and 6, 2 from law of exponents. So negative 2 to the negative 4th power. How do we simplify this negative exponent? 1, negative 1, Section. 2. Yep, and it's negative stays out front. Negative stays out front. Okay, so then this is like negative 1 over 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. So negative 1 over 16. Okay, that's right. All right, so any questions on number one? No? Okay. One. Number two, negative three to the zero exponent. What's anything to the zero? Anything to the zero is one. What about this negative out front? Stays out front, so negative one. Negative out front stays out front. So any questions on number two? No? Okay. All right, all right cubed s to the negative 4 for r equals negative 3 and for s equals 2. So if I plug those in, I get negative 3 cubed 2 to the negative 4. These are two separate problems, so we're going to solve them as such. Negative 3 cubed means negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. What is that? Negative 27. Okay, 2 to the negative 4. How do I simplify this exponent? 1 over 2 to the 4th. Okay, what's 2 to the 4th? 16. Yep, we just figured that out. Okay, so then now I have negative 27 times 1 over 16. What number is underneath this 27? One. One. How do I multiply fractions? Oh, straight across. Straight across. So negative 27 times 1 is negative 27. 1 times 16 is 16. Not so bad. Oh, he left and he's ineligible. He has three assignments on ICU for me. I don't know, but he's ineligible, so I hope he doesn't play. He's not eligible to go. So. I'm sure he doesn't. All right, I'll talk to Mr. Dakota about it. Four. All right, so a to the negative three, b to the fourth, c to the negative two. The only thing that I'm going to change are my negative exponents. So which ones have negative exponents? Okay. Okay, so just a and c, right? b is positive exponent, so b stays exactly where it is. Okay, so if this a to the negative three is on top and I want to make it positive, where do I move it? To the bottom. Perfect. If this c to the negative 2 is on the bottom and I want to make it positive, where do I move it? To the top. Okay, so then what's on top is b to the 4th, and now c to the 2nd. That 2 becomes positive when we move it up. Okay, so whenever you move something, you have to change the sign, so that c becomes positive. Okay, and then that A comes in the bottom, and the 3 becomes positive, so B to the 4th, C squared, all over A cubed. You don't, the C can come before the B, you don't have to write them that way, I just think it looks better when they're in alphabetical order. Okay, so it could be C squared B to the 4th. Does that make sense? Yes, everybody's following her? No, that doesn't make much sense. Followed. Okay, so any questions on number 4? Nope. Okay. Number five, b to two b to the sixth over c to the negative four. I only mess with the negative exponents. So what's my negative exponent? Okay, um, and it's on the bottom. So where do I need to move it? To the top. I leave the two b to the sixth alone, and then the c to the fourth comes on top, and that four becomes positive. So 2b6, c4. Make sense? Okay. Alright, 
number six. No, it's just moving down. The cube root of r to the sixth s squared. What do I do? Divide. divide. So I take my inside number and divide by my outside number. Six divided by three is two. Twelve divided by three is four. Alright, so number seven, eighty one to the one half. Can you calculators? Because we're going to do this one together on the calculator just so we can make sure we remember how to do it for the test. Okay. Alright, I agree with you, Kalani, that the two gets pushed forward. Then I write a root, one stays where it's at, and the 81 goes inside. Okay, so we need to remember how to take the square root of something on our calculator. So we're going to go to the calculator where you can see this poster. Okay, first thing you hit is the number 2. Okay, then we go to our light blue second button, hit that. Yes, <laughs> second button, and then you hit your carrot key. What's the one that looks like this. Because it's like the tip of a carrot. That's what it's called. That's what it's called in English. That's what it's called in math. You can maybe call it that. Fine. Whatever. The pointer, the arrow key, whatever. That's what you hit. Then you type in 81 and hit enter. Nine. Nine. Okay. There you go. Nine. So this becomes nine. And this part simplifies to nine, but we still have that one outside, and nine to the first is nine. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm so boring. I'm sorry. Thank you. Wait, what is your well, like, almost done. Yes. You got this? Yes. Do you have that? You're not even on the right problem at this point, Connie. I'm leaving you. I'm coloring. No! <laughs> Flip to number eight. Okay, three gets pushed forward. 64 goes underneath, two stays outside. What's the cube root of 64? Um, 16. Oh, wait. Four. Four squared, which is. There we go. Okay. All right, last one before we switch to something new. They have the square root of x to the eighth, y to the sixth. What number is out here? Two. So we divide by two. Eight divided by two is four. Six divided by two is three. Yes. Okay, like number ten. Number ten. All right, number ten. These will go fast. Okay, we're finding our degree of our polynomial. Your degree is your biggest exponent, so in this case, your degree is five. Yes. Biggest exponent is five. Just five is fine. Okay, and this one is zero. I agree with that. This one is a little different because there's two letters. Yes, there's an S and a T. What exponent is on this S? Zero. One. Two. One. So then we have to add our exponents to find our degree. So four. You only have to do that when there's two letters, right? All the other ones only had one letter or no letters. Only when there's two letters do you have to add them. Or more than one letter. Okay? One above this. That one? Yes, you have to add them. See, it's right here. That's one you just helped me th with. Number number ten. No, that one only has it only has one x. It doesn't have like an x and a y or an x and a z or an x and an a. It just has an x. <laughs> number thirteen. We're writing our polynomial in standard form. What does it mean to be in standard form? Biggest, uh, biggest to the smallest. Okay, so biggest exponent to the smallest exponent. So what comes first? Three n squared. Three n squared. Plus two n. Plus two n. Minus four. Okay. Now we need to classify our polynomial. That's where that table on page four hundred seven comes in. 
Okay, it's a second degree, which is a quadratic. How many terms does it have? Three. So, so it's a trinomial. And then leading coefficient is three. That's your front number. Front number is three. You're yeah. killing me. Well, I what if I don't know what? Yeah. No, we all know you. You're the first one to tell me. Yesterday. Okay, what's my biggest exponent? Two R. Okay, so two R to the sixth. What comes next? R to the sixth. Four R to the sixth. Okay, and what comes last? Okay, so now they're in order. So now we need to classify. Looking at our exponent of 6, how do we classify with a degree of 6? No, nope. go to your table. 6 degree. How many terms do I have? 3. 3, so how do I classify something with 3 terms? Trinomial. What do you mean? Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that, Colony. All right, and then what's our leading coefficient? Two. Two. All right, everybody got that? Yes, okay. All right, 15. Y squared plus 7 minus 8y cubed plus 2y. What comes first? Negative 8y cubed. Okay. Plus y squared plus 2y plus 7. Okay, I agree it's a cubic. How many terms do I have? Four, so it's a polynomial. And your leading, your leading coefficient is negative 8. Your, your front number is negative 8. <laughs> All right, so sixteen. What comes first? Okay, what comes next? Okay, so seventh degree polynomial because it has four terms and four or more terms as a polynomial. And our leading coefficient, what number is out front here? One. So our LC is one. Yes. Class is not going to go any faster, even if we go faster. If we go faster, we can speak the rest of the hour. You know, you, have, you don't even have your class. Like, you, have your class. you do not need to sleep. I need to sleep. I'm a, I'm a heavy sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number 17, we are... Adding, subtracting, or multiplying. So which one are we doing in this case? Uh, Adding. Okay. So 3t. What do I combine with that 3t? Okay. And so 3 minus 7 is negative 4t. And then 5 minus 2 is plus 3. Is it in standard form? Yes. Yes. All right, so on number 18, 4x to the 5th minus 6x to the 6th plus 2x to the 5th minus 7x to the 5th. Well, can I combine with this 4x to the 5th? Uh, and? Okay, so 4 plus 2 is? Okay, and then minus 7 is? Okay. Well, can I combine with this minus 6x to the 6? Just bring it down. 
perfect. Is this in standard form? So, what's our biggest exponent? Six. So this negative six x to the six has to come first. What comes next? Okay, so you would have got that one right, but you would have been in standard form. So you need to make sure you check in standard form too. All right, so number 19, we need to distribute my minus sign. So minus P minus minus P squared minus 4. Everybody follow? You probably did when you combined all of everything together, yeah. And then this 12 plus 6p just comes straight down with no parentheses. All right, well, let's write it down so we can get it right tomorrow. Or, I mean, on Monday. All right, what does minus and negative become? Positive. Okay, so what can I combine with my 12? Negative 4. 12 minus 4 is? 8. Okay, what can I combine with the 6p? So 6 minus 1p is 5p. What can I combine with my p squared? Nothing, so it comes straight down. Is this in standard form? Yes. No. What comes first? Okay, so when it's all said and done, you should have p squared plus 5p plus 8. What do you have? Oh, you guys are catty today. Yeah. It's a little rough in here. It's a little chilly. <laughs> All right, 10g minus g squared plus 3 minus negative 4g squared plus 8g minus 1. Let's distribute our minus. So minus negative 4g squared minus 8g minus or minus 1. Then 10g minus g squared plus 3 stays the same without parentheses. All right, minus a negative becomes a? Okay, so the 4g squared turns into a positive, the 1 turns into a positive. Let's start with what can I combine with my 10g? Okay, so 10 minus 8 is 2g. Okay, what can I combine with that minus 1g squared? Okay. So it'd be 3g squared. What can I combine with my 3? 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. Is this in standard form? No. What's going to come first? Okay, what comes next? Well, All right, we're almost done. All right, 21, we start multiplying. So we're going to multiply the things that are the same. 2 times 4 is 8. R times R is R squared. 8R squared. So that one should be 8R squared. All right, 3 times 2 is... Six times one half is three. three. S times S or S cubed times S to the first is S to the fourth times S squared is Okay. And T squared times T to the fourth is K times T to the eighth is to the fourteenth. Yep, 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 14. 
My neck really hurts. Only on like this side. I did. That's why it hurts. No, I don't want you to massage my neck. <laughs> Alright, sit down, Connie. Distribute my two. So two times x squared is two times negative four x is and two times six is twelve. We're not done. Yeah, we're not done. Okay. Twenty four. How am I gonna multiply this? What do I need to do? What do I need to do though? We need a foil. Really Okay, so the S stands for what, Connie? First. So A times A is A. Okay. Yeah, what's my L stand for? Outside. Okay, what am I outside? A and 6. Okay, so A times negative 6 is? Negative 6, 8. Okay, Diane, what's my I stand for? Inside. Inside, what's my inside? 3 So 3A. And Vaughn, what's my L stand for? She's not. She did the first one. What's my L stand for? Last. last. You need to know this. Last. What are my last terms? <laughs> what are my last terms? Three and negative six. Three and negative six. So three times negative six on negative eighteen. Okay. What's my last step? Okay, so I combine my middle terms. Yeah. Negative 6a plus 3a is? Negative 9. Negative 3a. Let's say positive 3, so we got negative 3a. Yeah, I know. Okay. How do you not know FOIL? Do you have that written down? Okay, cross out the two. Girls! So, first times first. Girls, D times D is D squared. <laughs> And 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 <laughs> Girls! And your little one is plus 9D. Inside is 9D. And your last one will be 81. And your combined one Oh, that's a very good box. Alright, so d squared plus 18d plus 81.